Welcome back to Learning Journal. SQL is one of the key skills for data engineers and data scientists. Apache Hive celebrates the credit to bring SQL into big data toolset and it is still exists in many production systems. However, we see a growing trend of migrating Hive workloads to Spark SQL. Spark SQL is the most popular and prominent feature of Apache Spark. And that's the topic for this video. So, let's start. The moment we talk about SQL, a bunch of things starts flashing in our mind. Here is the list. You want something like a database that allows you to organize your tables and views, right? Then you want to know the supported schema structure and the data types. What SQL functions does it support? Does it allow you to create new functions? Where is the metadata stored and how can you access the metadata? What opportunities do I have for optimization? And finally, you want to know about the clients. Does it support the SQL client? How do I connect from a remote machine? What about notebooks? How do I connect and pull data from Spark to my BI tools? Does it support JDBC and ODBC? I mean, the moment you call something SQL compliant, we start expecting all these things because these are the most basic and obvious features. DDL and DML syntax is the last thing. We already understand that the SQL comes in different flavors. They largely comply with some standards, but every database has got a SQL dialect. And so the Spark SQL is no different than others. Spark implements a subset of SQL 2003 standard. And hence, every SQL construct and function that you might know is not available in Spark. But you have more than enough SQL support. In addition to the NC SQL syntax, Spark SQL also supports a large chunk of HiveQL. We will cover all of these things with appropriate examples. Let's start with the list of supported clients. Apache Spark allows you to execute SQL using a variety of methods. The most widely used methods are listed here. The easiest method to use Spark SQL is to use from command line. Let's try it. The tool is the Spark SQL. The command line tool is not much popular among Spark developers. You cannot install and use it from a remote machine. However, it is still a good tool to test your Spark queries and execute your SQL scripts from command line. It also throws a lot of debug messages for each SQL. However, you can start it in silent mode to avoid unnecessary debug messages. Let's try some examples. The first thing that I want to do is to create a database. Spark SQL comes with a default database. If you do not specify a database, that means you are referring to the default database. We don't want to do that. So let's create a new database. You can create a database using following code. Simple, isn't it? Spark SQL database has a default location. If the specified path does not already exist, this command will try to create a directory with the given path. When you drop that database, Spark will delete that directory. If you already have a database, you can describe it. The describe command shows you the current location of the database. If you create the database without specifying a location, Spark will create the database directory at a default location. You can get your default location using the following command. If you want to change the default database setting, you can change this setting at session level using set command. Or you can set it permanently using Spark configuration files. Great. I am using a multi-node Hadoop Spark cluster in Google Cloud. My default file system is HDFS. 
So the create database statement will look for the specified directory location in HDFS. If the directory does not exist, Spark SQL will create a directory for this database in HDFS. Let's check it. If you want to create your database in Google storage bucket, all you need to do is to specify a fully qualified Google storage location. Similarly, if you are using AWS EMR cluster, you can create your database in S3 bucket. Like Google and Amazon, every cloud provider offers an integrated HDFS compatible storage solution. If you are using cloud environment, you are most likely to use that cloud storage instead of using HDFS. And there are many reasons to use cloud storage. They are cheaper, reliable, atomic, version controlled, and you get the freedom to scale up or scale down your cluster size depending upon your dynamic compute requirements. Great. Now if I create a table in this database, Spark SQL will create a subdirectory for the table and place the data files in that subdirectory. That's what the database means for Apache Spark. It is just a namespace and a directory location. Let's create a table. I cannot cover the syntax for all DDL and DML statements in this video. So, I was looking for some good Spark SQL reference documentation. And unfortunately, I found just one at Databricks. It is not fully comprehensive, but that's what we have. You can refer the documentation for the syntax. However, I want to cover create table syntax here. And the reason is particularly important. I want you to understand the correlation between Spark SQL syntax and the data frame APIs. I'll come back to that point and explain the correlation. But for now, let's assume that you have some data in a CSV file and you want to create a table and load that data into the table. If you already know Hive, you might have done it using following HiveQL commands. Once you have a table, you might want to load data into the table as shown below. Since Spark SQL also supports the majority of HiveQL, you can easily execute these HiveQL statements in Spark SQL. Let's do that. Now, you can easily query that table. You can describe the table and check some details about the table. There are two important things to notice here. The type of the table and the provider. It is a managed table and it is a Hive compatible table because we used Hive syntax to create the table. If you are using HiveQL syntax to create a table, a Spark will default to Hive Surdees. Hive Surdees might not be optimized to use Spark specific serialization features. And hence, they might perform slower than Spark's native serialization. So, we don't recommend the use of HiveQL for creating table. That means, Spark's create table statement is slightly different than HiveQL. Here is the equivalent Spark SQL code. Did you notice the difference? Instead of row format and stored as, we are using the using keyword. If you don't know HiveQL, don't even worry about that. Great. Now it is time to show you the correlation between Spark data frame APIs and the Spark SQL syntax. Do you still recall the data frame reader APIs? Let me show you. Here is the code that we use to read the data from a CSV source. Does it look like create table statement? In both methods, we tell the file format and then provide a bunch of options. Both methods must know the mechanism to read the file. And hence, all the options for a CSV file type that we learned earlier are valid for create table as well. 
there are two more things that we specified to the data frame reader a schema and the data file location we are specifying the schema in the create table so that's taken care right if you want you can specify the data file location as well how to do that we already learned that earlier use the option to specify a path like this there is another shortcut specify the location parameter however there is a catch here we don't want our table to refer to this csv file from that location we want our table to store data inside the database directory that we created earlier right let me formalize this idea spark sql supports two types of tables managed tables and unmanaged tables or external tables spark stores a managed table inside the database directory location if you drop a managed table spark will delete the data file as well as the table subdirectory and that is fair because that's what we wanted to do when we issued a drop table statement right the unmanaged tables are external tables that means they reside somewhere outside the database directory if you drop an unmanaged table spark will delete the metadata entry for that table and because of that drop table statement you won't be able to access that table using spark sql however the data file for that unmanaged table is still resides at the original location spark leaves that file as it was most of the time if you are creating a database and then creating a table in that database you would be using managed tables that approach is simple and clean that's what we have been doing with all other database systems so what is the purpose of those external tables why do we need external tables suppose you have some data that resides in some other file system location or maybe in some other storage system it may be in a jdbc database or cassandra or maybe in mongodb that data is stored maintained and managed by a different system or a different team you don't own it but you want to make it available to your spark database application and your application users in the same manner as they are using your other managed tables you don't want to make a copy of it but to refer the same one as a locally managed table how would you do it unmanaged table or some people call it as the external table that is when you would be using an external table in apache spark great let's come back to our original discussion the create table statement if you specify the path option or a location parameter spark will make it an external table let's try both the options and check out the difference so the first statement should create an external table because we specified the path option and the second statement should create a managed table because we do not specify a file location describe the first table good it is an external table check the second table this one is a managed table right there is no need to load the data into an external table because it refers to the data file from its original location and the file already contains the data but what about the managed tables my managed table does not contain any data yet how to load the data into a managed table the load data statement that we used earlier is only available for tables that you created using hive format you cannot use the load data on a spark sql table that sounds like a problem isn't it how do we load data into a spark sql managed table i'll come back to this question in the next video but before i conclude the first part of the spark sql let me highlight the main takeaways from this session 
Spark SQL internally implements data frame APIs. And hence, all the data sources that we learned in the earlier video, including Evro, Parquet, JDBC, and Cassandra, all of them are available to you through Spark SQL. In this example, I have some data into CSV file. I wanted to create a manage table and load that data from a CSV file to the manage table in Spark. Since CSV file is not an efficient method to store data, I would want to create my manage table using Avro or Park. We already learned Parquet data source. So, let's use that knowledge to create a Parquet table. And we will load the data into this table from the CSV source. Here is the create table statement to create a Parquet table. I don't think you need an explanation for this. Great! That's it for this session. In the next session, we will load the CSV data into this table and learn few more things about Spark SQL. Thank you very much for watching Learning Journal. Keep learning and keep growing.